Let's take a look at some charts and information on Compound Finance for Brave New Coin. So Compound is part of the lending and borrowing sector in DeFi, arguably what started DeFi, uh, the sector, not Compound itself. But you have to start somewhere with decentralized finance. It's really make or die. Tether, definitely a part of that conversation to get the ball rolling as well, stable coins, that sort of thing. So they currently only have 10 markets. Um, and they have uh, several custodians as well, institutions, you know, the usual, what you'd expect from a, a leader in lending and borrowing. Um, they offer probably the shortest list of lending and borrowing, maybe aside from Maker, but for me, Maker's kind of its own animal, its own beast. If anything, Maker migrated to a sort of broader lending and borrowing, multi-collateral versus single collateral, um, then a comp towards Maker, but Anyway, they've got they've got ten lending and borrowing markets where you can participate various APYs depending on what the demand is. Typically, demand for stable coins is higher than everything else on any given day, which makes sense in a bull market. You're going to see demand for people leveraging up on USD, and if the coins themselves are volatile or bullish, there's less of a reason to lend unless you're an ultra long term holder in my opinion, because you are just holding, right? You can always lend on top of your holdings, which is probably why these APYs for the coins in general are so low relative to stable coins, right? For the most part, that's across the board in these lending and borrowing systems. Uh, if we look at the TVL in USD, it's dropped considerably. I remember a couple of days ago, uh, Comp was number one TVL. I forget the exact reason uh, what they did or what was happening to, to migrate that liquidity over to comp. But uh, that has since retraced slightly, and it's not just ETH or BTC volatility, it looks like, um, unless DeFi Pulse has this incorrect, that some of this liquidity got pulled and or is just not measured on DeFi Pulse at this time. It's possible something got moved to layer two. You know, all these, the thing, the difficult part about commenting on all these projects weekly is they all do so much so fast that it's it's impossible for me to know what everybody's doing all the time. Um, that's why I just like looking at multiple sites for this. So if we look at the bank's stats, uh, they also show a pretty significant drop from 11.8 billion to 9.2. So they're still at the top of the list. I think they're number two on uh, DeFi Pulse as far as TVL is concerned. And they are number two below BSC, <laughs> below pancake swap, scarily enough, on uh, the bank. So DeFi Pulse has a compound listed as number two with maker number one. So there's clearly some weird calculations going on between the two sites. But that's why it's important. You know, if you don't trust the data on one site, it's like crypto quant versus whale alerts versus glass nodes. You know, if you don't trust one of them, just look at all of them and see what they're saying. So TVL still historically high, TVL down over the from the all-time highs uh, last week. Uh, if we look at all the lending and borrowing stuff, Compound, Maker, Aave. Compound still has the most outstanding loans, followed by Maker, and then Aave at the bottom of the pack there. And if we look at deposits, those have all gone down slightly. Um, Compound in the green here leading both Aave and Maker. So Compound kind of becoming the powerhouse here over the other two and this will slosh around depending on all sorts of factors liquidity uh you know if yearn is involved if there's some sort of index right if there's like a re-indexing of the apys or something um you're going to see liquidity or deposits shift from ave to maker to compound or back and forth but there's there's almost always some incentive based reason it's not just like all of a sudden people love comp today versus ave right um and then if we look at the total market share Comp is definitely more than half at this point of the trifecta, the triumvirate of uh, Ave Compound and Maker. So I don't think the service is going anywhere anytime soon. I don't think uh, lending and borrowing is going anywhere anytime soon. I'm just apprehensive of, at the tokens themselves. So this is the token uh, transaction counts for comp and transaction values for comp. And I've been saying this in the past couple of videos for this DeFi stuff, but the question is, does, do the on-chain metrics even matter? for any of the governance tokens if reality is you're not really going to be moving your comp very often you know for any reason unless it's speculative or unless there's some sort of vote going on and we can look at the votes here and the proposals 
and they may even show who who is voting. It depends on on the site if this will even load. Always a good sign when your your governance token dashboard doesn't load. I'll check it again later, but it doesn't look like it's even loading. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's be real, right? You're not going to move your comp around unless it's speculation. So this is probably all a measure of speculation. So maybe it's in that sense more pure for price specifically. But it's not like these transactions per day numbers are impressive. Even per week, you know, it's down pretty significantly over whatever the baseline was from July 2020. Um, Average transaction values are up as comp appreciation kicks in, as well as ETH fees remain high. You're just going to see less, fewer, smaller transactions. Um, NVT, inverse metric of economic utility in the line here, and active addresses in the fill. Again, active addresses down. Question is, does it even matter? Do we care? Are we really going to be moving comp? You know, this isn't ETH. This isn't BTC. It's not a quote unquote currency. <laughs> You're not going to be moving this stuff around for the most part. It's just going to kind of do its thing. NVT continues to kind of hold a range low. Um, if you are bullish, you want NVT to continually remain low because that says that price relative to on-chain activity is low. Uh, so it's bullish. You, know, you want to see you want to see tons of activity relative to market cap because that says that the market cap is genuine, legitimate from that metrics perspective. Um, you're assuming that on-chain activity equals value in that case. So NVT remains low, active addresses sort of multi-month lows. You know, nothing, overall nothing too bullish on on-chain metrics, but that's DeFi-wide, that's not just comp. Uh, moving over to technicals on the 12-hour, comp um, held this range, really, after its run-up from November. You know, kind of just had this, this it double-topped, had a bleed, right? Classic, like, airdrop style chart where it's, Early people getting out, they just held, or they're up, you know, several hundred multiples, whatever it is, um, selling, selling, selling. On top of that, you have people who are long from the top selling, and that's just creating this bleed, bleed, bleed. Eventually, uh, the bleed stops, right, and demand kicks in, and this was before January, so comp had a head start um, in November as far as bottoming is concerned, and then January happens, everything explodes, uh, February, March, April, ETH fees get so incredibly high, it doesn't really make sense to do much on ETH for many people. Comp goes stagnant. And if you're reading this based on the chart, you can say, okay, maybe this was an Adam and Eve, a V and a U at the top. Maybe there's some sort of inverted head and shoulders mess here. Maybe it's none of those. Maybe it's just a Wyckoff accumulation. It's probably not Wyckoff distribution. But at the very least, you can measure this high, measure this low. You get a horizontal range and you can say, all right, with a reasonable degree of certainty, I can expect these highs if we break this horizontal. So we broke the horizontal, and along with everything else, we, for the most part, uh, pulled back swiftly. So some of the alts reached their targets. Some of them didn't, did not. Uh, BTC was probably the weakest among those, where it broke out, massive fake out, and <laughs> broke down, right, over the weekend. So if I'm bullish, I want this range to hold. I want to see uh, tons of volume on any of these lows. Now let's say we get a third low between 350 and 450. I want to see people buying that up ferociously. I definitely don't want to see any of these previous lows get violated. I definitely don't want to revisit this monthly pivot at uh, below 300. You know, I want all of this to find some sort of accumulation zone if I'm bullish. Uh, if you're bearish, you want everything to just fall through the table, right? Ultimately, it's kind of like this previous all-time high. You want to see that break. Um, you want to see sub 250 again, really, if you're bearish. So it's more more neutral, more consolidation. You know, I had a chance. This is just how things are. You're either trending, uh, bearish, bullish, or you're consolidating. You know, there's really, that's really it as far as market decision-making process. Uh, the consolidations can be bullish, in which case they're accumulation. They can be bearish, in which case they're consolidation. And then from there, you can you can decide, is this accumulation or distribution based on chart patterns or trend metrics, whatever you want to look at. So this looks about as neutral as I, I can really see it at this point. 12-hour uh, cloud, which has been sort of noisy, but decently okay as far as telling you in December to start getting long, and then in mid-January, early January, to tell you to relong this after it tested support. So currently not below the cloud, but you know, this at this point, I wouldn't trust anything the cloud's telling you here because we've just been ranging for so long. You know, this is a great example of just trusting 
horizontal lines over any trend metric because the trend met metrics aren't going to know what to say. It's just been sideways. And anytime we're sideways for more than a month, trend metrics typically just trip over themselves. Like they are here and, you know, you're getting mixed signals back and forth. But on balance, we're above the club still, and we still look okay. Now, if, if we get below the club, then we start to get into the bearish conversation. And if we get below the range, then we get into that bearish conversation. If we look at Comp ETC, it's kind of the exact opposite. It looks like it's ready for a bullish reversal. If anything, it's got some sort of weird falling wedge and or inverted head and shoulders, right? Uh, shoulder, head, shoulder, maybe another shoulder. Um, trend is bearish, but it looks like it's telling you it wants to reverse. Now, if we compare this to ETH, uh, Comp ETH, right? It looks the opposite. You know, <laughs> it's like, this looks like it's not a head and shoulders, but it's not, not a head and shoulders. You know what I mean? It's different. <laughs> there are clear horizontal lines here. Um, it's a great example of the two. And you can see a definite denial at uh, the 200 here versus Compa BTC, which is kind of hugging this 200, kind of testing it, testing it, testing it. So the cloud and the 200 day moving average here tell the same story, which is this may be an inverted head and shoulders if we break 01, basically. Hey, look, another psychological resistance. Surprise, surprise. Uh, if we break 01, then we're probably good to go for further bullish continuation. Whereas this looks like it's going to revisit lows. It looks bearish. It looks like it wants lows. Uh, doesn't Comp does not look like it will outperform ETH based on trend. So if you want to see me trading uh, DeFi stuff, you can check out the managed DeFi portfolio on enzyme.finance. And there's 15 to 20 coins which will be actively traded. Comp is among them. Comp is being held and it has a 2% allocation currently along with everything else. And how this works is it's non-custodial portfolio management. So you can see all of uh, the trades, the allocations, deposits, withdrawals. You can see who comes out and when, AUM, all that sort of thing. You can see all the trades I make. So even if you don't participate uh, directly through Enzyme, you can always just see, you know, what I'm doing and when. And, you know, if I'm, I'm bullish on Enzyme or if I'm bullish on comp and I'm talking about comp in a video, you can say, does this guy own any comp? Is he being honest? Um, you know, you can always check that because it's all right here. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.